Hello, welcome to my video on VLOOKUP troubleshooting. I'm going to show you many of the common problems you might encounter while trying to do a VLOOKUP. Uh, I have the data that you want to be adding your data to uh, in blue here and the VLOOKUP range in yellow here. So typically this will be on a different spreadsheet or in a different worksheet on your in your same wow. workbook. But I put it right here next to your data for convenience so I don't have to tab between sources. Let's start out by showing you a problem that may not even be your fault but you're gonna get an error returned. So let's put in our VLOOKUP and the first value of the VLOOKUP is the data that you want to match to your lookup range to return a different value back to this range. Put that value in, comma, and select your lookup range and comma and you want to put in the column number that you want returned so I want to return part description as you can see here part description is the second column in this lookup range column one is part number column two is part description column three is country so because I want to return the part description I'm going to put comma two and because I want only matching values I'm going to put comma false close parenthesis and hit enter. Okay, to copy this formula down, as you know, double click on the bottom right or drag it down manually. And you see we have this error here. Why is there an NA error on this? Okay, let's look. Let's find out why. The part number I'm looking up is B105 and there is no B105 in the lookup range so it is quite possible that you will get an NA error by doing nothing wrong because the value is not in your lookup range. Uh, there's a couple of ways around that if you're expecting that and you want it to return a blank um, you can edit the formula to allow for an is error you could do something like if is error which means if this VLOOKUP returns an error you want to return a blank value I can't type today return a blank value if it's not an error then you want it to return the VLOOKUP value that you were originally searching for so you would re-enter the same formula that you had I'll go over this again because I missed a parenthesis. Autocorrect caught it. Okay, so the way this works is if there's an error in this formula, meaning this error of the value that was missing, then return a blank result. If there's not an error, just return the result I was looking for. Alright, so copy that formula down, and now you see that's a blank there instead of an NA which is nice and convenient. Okay, let's move on to the next type of error you might see. Let's remove this value that is clearly not in our lookup range. And we'll remove all these. Let's write our VLOOKUP again. VLOOKUP. The value you want to find in the other table. Comma. Put in your lookup range. Comma. The value that you want to return as far as the columns. Column 1, column 2 and false. Now I'm going to drag this formula down. Oh no, there's three NA errors. Why could that be? If you notice, I did not lock the range reference when putting in the original VLOOKUP. So F4 to I28 in the next row became F5 to I29. You can see here the green box where it's referring to. Uh, a couple rows down further than that, it became F9 to I33. If you see, it's shifting the same size range down by one row as the formula goes down. And this is on purpose, of course, because it's a very useful function sometimes in Excel. But if you're trying to refer to a set range, you need to lock that range. You can't uh, leave it unlocked because as you drag the formula down it's going to change the range it's looking at. So the first NA you see here 
The reason it's an NA is the value you're looking for, A106, is actually outside of the lookup range now because of the shifting of that lookup range. So, um, and if you have questions about this because um, you've never worked with it before, feel free to ask me in the comments. But this range that you're looking at, you need to lock with the F4 key which places dollar signs in front of the column and row values of the starting and stopping uh, range. So the dollar sign in front of the letter means you're locking the column and the dollar sign in front of the row means you're locking the row. That means if you're dragging it vertically or horizontally that range is going to stay the same. Alright, so now that we've locked the um, lookup range we want to go ahead and copy that formula down to the bottom and you now see that it works correctly. Alright, let's see what else we can break on this first worksheet before we move on to the rest. Um, oh, I've got an idea. Let's do a VLOOKUP and part description, or part number, I'm sorry, comma, where do you want to look? I'm going to look over here lock that range with F4, comma, and let's say I want to return the weight instead of part description. So I'm going to return column 1, 2, 3, 4, and then let's say, oops, I miscounted, column 5, comma, false, for exact match. Uh, reference error. Why is it a reference error? What does that mean? It means I don't know where column 5 is because your uh, reference uh, range is only four columns. So you get an error. And to fix that, we would change that to a 4. And you can see now the weight is returning the VLOOKUP. Let's rela relabel that. Weight. All right. We're going to step it up in difficulty by one notch. Moving on to worksheet two. Okay, in this one, um, you see that your part number and your part number don't match. So, typically, when I'm working with part numbers, uh, especially if you're getting it from multiple systems, maybe one from SAP and one from some local system that you use, they won't match exactly. Um, in this case, every time there's an A and then a number, this other lookup range has an A dash in the number. So to try out your VLOOKUP without any modification, put in your range, lock the range with F4, comma, let's look up the part description again. Okay, so it worked with the part number, part number 120, part number 120, because there was no hyphen, but it doesn't work with these with the A111 because the value here is A-111. So the uh, Excel VLOOKUP does not find a matching value. It returns NA, which was what you get if you remember if the data is not in the range that you're looking for. It says not applicable this value is not in that table. Okay, we can fix that though. There's a couple ways actually we can fix that. Um, if you see the pattern of uh, the discrepancy, in this case, everything on this side is an A number number number, and everything on this side is A dash number number number, uh, that's a common discrepancy. So we can fix it all the same way. So one way to do that would be to um, copy the discrepant character to the clipboard, highlight the range that you want to fix, hit Alt-F, which is Find, or do it from your menu up top, and it says Find What, and paste that in there with Control-V, and replace with what? Uh, replace it with nothing, because there is no hyphen in my data. So I'm going to replace all. And I'm in, I've been informed that Excel has made 11 replacements. I'm going to close that. 
And you see now, miraculously, all of my VLOOKUPs work, and all of the part numbers over here no longer have a hyphen. All right, so that's one method. For the purposes of um, learning, I'm going to undo that, and I'm going to show you another method. So you have your hyphens back in there again. I'm going to insert a new column next to the original part number. We'll call this part num2. And in this case, I see that all of the hyphens are in the second slot, uh, second character place of the string. So I'm going to do equals left of this cell, comma 1, which means I'm going to take the first character from the left and then concatenate that, which means combine right Oh, didn't mean to hit that key. Right of this cell, comma, three, enter. So this formula, left cell F4, comma, one, means it took the one character from the left, and with the uh, shift seven, right cell f4 comma 3 means it took one two three characters and combined them together to be a 101 and I can drag that down and then in this VLOOKUP instead of looking at part number I'll look at cell part num2 and hit enter and do that and then oh I've uncovered another problem when I did that, it uh, fixed the values with the letter A, and it broke the values with the number only. So um, now where I had left 1 and then right 3, it's added, it's duplicated the first character from the left. So let's fix this formula so it doesn't do that. All right, so in this case, um, all of the ones that are three characters long are fine. They already match. And the ones that are five characters long are the ones that are not matching because it's supposed to be looking for something four characters long. So let's do a simple if statement. We'll say if len, which is length of this text, close parentheses, equals 5 the true value will say to look up the left first and right first three and combine them together the false value will be to just look up that value close the parentheses hit enter and drag that down to the bottom and now you see our VLOOKUP works again and these are not broken here so in this example, I showed you a couple of ways around it. The first one's probably the simplest, but just for your uh, experience, I showed you the second two. And that's a cover, by the way. I didn't anticipate any additional problems while running into that equation. But moving on, let's go to worksheet three. OK, let's see what we can find on this worksheet to mess this up. Let's do a VLOOKUP. We're going to look for this part number in this data range. Lock your cells. Uh, look for the second column and false. And A, that means it's not found on that lookup range. But clearly 120 and 120 is there. I don't understand why. All right, so. The reason is, this 120 is a number. It's the number 120. This 120 here is text. It is alphanumeric character 1, 2, and 0, being a text string. So one quick clue you can see to uh, identify that is this green shading in the top left corner. Uh, 
which if you click in there you can see that it has a uh, warning indicator for you if you click in there it says number stored as text another way to identify that everything was manually left aligned in this spreadsheet but if you take away the alignment by clicking um, uh, the alignment, any alignment twice, so that's no longer indicating an alignment. Um, text is default as left align, and numeric is default as right align. So let's just type something in here real quick to demonstrate that. If I type 113, Excel knows that I mean 113 as a number, not 113 as a text so it sets that as right align. So if you see a bunch of left aligned numbers it's a quick indicator that they're actually alphanumeric string not the numeric equivalent. Okay so there's a couple ways to fix this. Um, the first way would be to select the entire range of data that is um, errant and click on this box here and convert it to number that's a little bit slow on the processing side if you have a few hundred thousand records that's going to take a long time to a select all the range and then b have excel manually go in and change it all so um, I'm gonna hit undo here and show you another problem with it if this data was mixed with alphanumeric data and this intended to be numeric data for example if I'm gonna select this range here uh, these didn't have the error box, so that option isn't there for me to click on and convert them to numbers. I had to specifically select just the ones with that error message, or I can't do it. So while that is one way to do it, it's not the only way, and it might not be the best way. Sometimes it won't even work. Um, if your data is completely mixed, if it was one uh, A111, and then 112, and then A113, it would take forever to manually click them all and uh, convert it. So um, I'm going to show you another way. Insert a blank column. And here we're going to 